Hello everyone, welcome back to Major Hi-Fi. I'm Luke. Today we have two new products from iFi Audio. We have the HipDAC V2 and the Go Blue. These are both very small pocket-sized headphone DAC slash amps. There's a major difference between them, which is that the Go Blue is a Bluetooth headphone DAC slash amp, and the HipDAC is of course wired it is a update of the original hip DAC. i'm not really going to be doing a comparison between these because it doesn't seem fair they're just super different uh, uses but i will do a little bit of a rundown on sort of the sonic similarities or differences might as well they are similar prices the hip DAC is 189 and the go blue is 199 it's hard to compare bluetooth and wired too too much of course because they're just different kind of modes of action but of course there is a reason to consider both for you know various advantages and disadvantages all right so let's get into it. So we're going to start off with the hip DAC. This is the hip DAC version 2. The original hip DAC is definitely one of my kind of go-to recommendations uh, for headphone amps, primarily for people who are just getting into this, beginners. Uh, or if you just want something portable, but still it's going to give you a lot, a lot of power and actually has some, you know, functions and different settings on it, then you can't do much better than this for the price. So in the box, we have the HipDAC version 2 itself, and we also get just the standard uh, cables. So we have an OTG cable, a USB A to USB C, and a USB 3.0 cable. So design wise, not really many differences from the original HipDAC. On the back here, we have a USB 3.0 Type A digital input and a USB C charging port. Then on the front here, we have our balanced 4.4 millimeter output and S balanced 3.5 millimeter, and we have the buttons for the X base and power match settings along with the volume knob that is also what turns it on with a little click. When you turn this on, it's gonna light up and then you basically just use this very low profile tactile knob to adjust the volume. I like that it's low profile. It makes it a little bit harder to adjust accidentally and it has a fair amount of resistance on it. I wouldn't mind a little bit more resistance for this being a pocket unit. So, you know, I just don't wanna accidentally turn up the volume from it rubbing up against my pants or something like that, but it should overall be fine in that respect. You know, it's relatively portable. It's not teeny, teeny tiny. Of course, you can get those uh, DAC slash amps that are like basically just part of the headphone cable almost. They're so small, uh, but it could easily fit in your pocket or, or your back pocket next to your phone or your DAP or whatever. The HipDAC V2 utilizes a brand new 16 core XMOS chip and supports full MQA decoding as opposed to the original HipDAC, which only offers rendering. The GMT clock system has been upgraded to eradicate jitter and enhance sound quality. And finally, of course, this has a bright orange color as opposed to the blue on the original hip DAC. Just like the original hip DAC, the power match function is meant to match the level of drive to the load presented by the headphones so that you have some sort of added power going on and you don't have to turn up the volume quite as much. And then the X base is a base boost that operates on the analog domain instead of interacting with the digital signal via DSP. So in terms of sound quality, this seems to be a DAC slash amp that, you know, when used just bare bones with no bass boost or anything, it kind of warms up the bottom end and crisps up the top end, nothing out of the ordinary. There is an audible high-end boost, uh, nothing, you know, outlandish, but certainly added brightness. Make sure you're going to be okay with that if you are looking at this. Definitely great for those headphones that need just a tiny bit more brightness to get them, you know, all the way there. I felt like the mids uh, were given a bit of a stronger bite while the kind of high end and low end were maybe cleansed a bit more. So maybe the saturation and coloring is a bit more focused in the middle. The HipTac V2 I felt like was great for making less expensive earbuds and IEMs or whatever uh, sound a bit more expensive than they are. Like if you have like the Final Audio A4000, I used that with this and it definitely gave it about like a, I don't know, 50 to $100 worth of extra quality in my opinion. And then if you use this with a more expensive model, like the new uh, 64 Audio Duo, which I just reviewed, I will link that below. It's definitely gonna just take what's already there and kind of accentuate the you know pre-existing abilities and dynamics of the headphone or IEM that are already there. And that's what any good 
solid DAC slash amp should do for you. In terms of the power match and X-Base functions on this, I definitely found myself using the power match a fair amount, especially for you know more power hungry headphones. But I also often used it for headphones that maybe didn't require it because it felt like it kind of extended the coloring that the amp already offered. And I like that, I like some uh, added coloring. So definitely try out the power match function just to sort of see how it adds a little bit of extra snap and crispness. Though do be careful, make sure your volume's low. You don't wanna blow out your headphones or your ears. In terms of the X bass function, it's definitely a pretty hefty bass boost. So do be, not careful, but I was just conservative with how often I used it because it definitely overwhelmed a number of headphones that I used it with. Not all of them, but like, I don't know, like the Canera Nana, not a super bassy IEM, but it doesn't really need a lot more bass. And the X bass gives it a pretty hefty extra dose. And to me, it was just a bit too much, but on uh, IEMs and headphones that are maybe lacking bass, it can be good for not just neutralizing them, but adding a bit more, uh, you know, low end even after the fact. So I would definitely say the X bass function is nice to have. You're not gonna use it all the time unless you want kind of intense bass on everything. So overall, this feels like another good upgrade by iFi. Does it sound worlds different than the original hip deck? No, but it does sound a bit different, maybe a little bit more colored, but also a bit cleaner than the original hip DAC. Um, if you already have the original, do you need to buy the new one right away? If you sort of use the hip DAC as your go-to everyday thing, I sort of, like I said, with the Zen DAC version two, if it's your favorite uh, amp, then you might as well upgrade and get the best possible version of it. But if it's just something that you use occasionally, uh, you know, then I don't see a reason to generally switch it out with this one. But if you haven't bought the hip DAC yet, then this might be the time to do it because I think it is at its best. All right, so let's talk about the Go Blue. This is a, another DAC slash amp from iFi, but it is Bluetooth. So this one is much smaller than the hip DAC. It is so tiny and adorable. Tell me this is not the cutest thing ever. I will give you a comparison if you're thinking about both of them. It's a lot smaller, but like I said, I think these just kind of have different purposes, uh, but they are in similar price ranges and they do have you know the same function overall. So this is also pretty simple to use. We've got the on off button on the side here, we can turn it on. The LED on the back will light up green. And over here we have the pairing button. We can hold this down and we'll get uh, the light flashing over here. We can then pair it with our device. And then this button here controls the different settings. We also have an X base on the Go Blue, similar to the hip DAC. And the Go Blue also has something called an X space on it, which is also controlled by this button here on the side. And then we have a volume knob that's also a button. And this button slash knob controls stuff like play, pause, skip, all that kind of stuff. We also can uh, figure out what Bluetooth format is being used by clicking the power button and a very nice robotic female assistant will tell you word for word what Bluetooth format is being used. It's a little bit strange, but it does work and um, lets you know what you're listening to. On the back here, we have a USB-C charging port. And then just like the hip deck, we have our balanced 4.4 millimeter and S balanced 3.5 millimeter outputs. That's all the functionality of this little teeny tiny DAC slash amp. The Go Blue has a 10 hour battery life and uses separate Bluetooth DAC and amp stages instead of an all-in-one chip system. The Bluetooth stage uses Qualcomm's four core QCC 5100 chip and the DAC stage uses a Cirrus Logic 32 bit DAC chip. The Go Blue uses Bluetooth 5.1 and supports the following Bluetooth formats, aptX Adaptive and aptX HD, LDAC and HWA slash LHDC, regular aptX and aptX low latency, AAC and SBC. Similar to the hip DAC, this is a amp that definitely adds some color and a fair amount of brightness, though this one's a bit brighter. Um, I was mostly okay with the sort of added high-end boost. It worked for me because it felt like a clean boost. It actually kind of uh, took back some of the high mid in a sense and left me with a cleaner but stronger high-end. And overall, it felt like it did a good job of sort of purifying the sound. Once again, sort of typical things that an amp should be able to do. Um, did I feel like sometimes it added a little bit more edge than I wanted, a little bit more crispness than I was looking for? Here and there, yeah, it depends on the mix, the headphones, all those you know factors, of course. But overall, I thought that it worked well and it didn't overly interfere with the signal or the timbre. Uh, it just felt like a pretty 
sort of appropriate level of coloring. In terms of the X base and X space functions, the X base boost on this is a fair amount lighter and more subtle than that on the HipDAC V2. I kind of preferred this base boost because it felt like uh, a bit more of a kind of just versatile base boost. It wasn't so intense and aggressive, uh, but definitely it is more subtle and maybe less uh, kind of exciting in a way, you could say. Uh, and then the X space function is very, very subtle. It does expand the sound stage. That is in exchange for kind of losing some of the low end at times, which is why it can be good to pair the X space and the X base together. You can turn both on at the same time. I found that when I turn on the X base with the X space, it kind of neutralized what low end was lost by widening the sound stage, so I liked that. But the X space function, definitely pretty subtle. I know that some of the other iFi amps have sort of 3D functions of some sort that I felt like were very drastic in widening the sound stage. This is a bit more subtle. It really does just kind of take uh, the outer edges and turn them up a little bit and then kind of feather out the middle just a tad bit. It's not drastic, but it does feel like a difference, and like I said, a more subtle kind of modulation can be good for making it more versatile. So yeah, overall I feel like this is a very successful Bluetooth jack slash amp. These are pretty hard to pull off in terms of uh, not losing quality and actually increasing it, but also in terms of being powerful enough, and this does feel powerful enough, it's of course gonna lose some leveling with Bluetooth is not as powerful as a wired DAC slash amp, but it comes pretty darn close and that's an accomplishment in and of itself. And also it's just very portable, easy to use, straightforward, and it does have that kind of reliable iFi quality that I look for in all of their amps and I tend to find. These definitely sort of put up a good example of the current generation of portable listening devices that still give you that audio file quality but are not so clunky and big and you know that you can still fit a lot in a small package. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions about these, uh, you know anything I didn't explain well enough in the video and I would be happy to get back to you in the comments and yeah I'll be back very soon with some more videos and reviews and until next time happy listening.